You were not meant to be a slave to the grind. You were not meant to trade your life force for money. You can escape gravity. You can unlock your life. You got this. Let's go. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Unlock Your Life. Do you have kids? Do you have kids? I have four. And if you do, there's probably a lot of stuff that you think about and you worry about with those children. And one of the things that I want for my kids is I want them to be successful and happy in their career. I want them to be able to advance. I want them to be able to do work that they enjoy. I want them to be productive. I want them to be able to make progress. And guys, I talk with a lot of people every week about where they're at. And a lot of them, the vast majority are stuck in a job they don't like, they don't want to do. They wish they had had the courage to do something, but there's definitely windows of time, right? When you're young, you have very, very little downside, very, very little risk. You don't have your own kids yet. You don't have a mortgage. You don't have debt, hopefully. You don't have a lot of things that can tie people into careers and jobs that they don't really want to do, but they wake up 10, 20, 30 years down the road, and now they've got the mortgage, they've got the car payments, they've got the kids, they've got the spouse, and there's really a lot higher risk to taking a chance. And so what I want to talk to you about is how do you instill in your children while they're young, before they're you know young adults or teenagers or whatever, to have that entrepreneurial drive so that they can take a chance when they're ready to take a chance, when they have an opportunity, that they've got the skills, the sales skills, the confidence, the ability to talk to other people, the ability to get their ideas across the table, to get buy-in so that they can form businesses, grow businesses, get clients, and hopefully lead a productive and profitable life and, and, and get into a career that they want. So, I'm going to start this off with a story. Just a few days ago, I came home and my eldest son, Jennings, Jennings the third, he's 11 years old, and he definitely has a drive for competition, success. You know, some, I think some children are more bent towards that than others, but I think you can train it in all. So, He's talking to me about an investment that we made (laughs) maybe a year and a half, two years ago, and we put some money into a cryptocurrency. The cryptocurrency was at 16 cents per token or whatever. It rocketed up to 40, 45 cents and then plummeted 99%. It's now sitting at like half of a cent. So he invested, I think, $300 into this thing, and it's now worth what, you know, six bucks. It's not worth much. And I I really hate to tell him that, but I say, hey, that's part of investing. You know, sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Maybe the token will come back. We're coming into a bull market. We got to kind of hang on, but it really wasn't making him feel better. And I could see it in his face. And I said, Jennings, your problem is not this investment, right? You've made the investment. You don't want to sell it and cash out your $6. You want to hang on to it. So there's really nothing you can do about that right now. What you need to focus on is getting your income up. You need to focus on earning more money because he wants to buy, um, I think he wants to buy a nicer shotgun. He has a, a shotgun that it, you know is not working so well and he'd like to buy a little bit better one. And he's got some money saved up. I mean, the kid is an absolute saver, but he wants to earn and he feels powerless, right? Because his investment's not going well. He's not earning, he's a kid. And so... I calmed him down and really what started to change the whole conversation was when we started to think about ideas. Well, how could you earn money, Jennings? And he's like, well, you know, I can't sell eggs because the chickens aren't laying that much eggs in the winter time. And I can't cut grass because grass isn't growing right now. And I can't sell lemonade because it's so cold outside and nobody wants to buy lemonade. And I was like, dude, you know, slow your roll. Because he was, he was going negative. He was going down into the pit of despair. And I said, well, let's think about what you could do. Instead of talking about all this stuff that's not going to work, let's start thinking about ideas. And through conversation, he stumbled upon the idea of hot chocolate. It's like, well, maybe we could sell hot chocolate. And I thought, hey, well, that's good. 
He's like, yeah, but how can I keep it warm? We dug around in the cabinets and we found one of those coffee air pots, you know, those pots that keep coffee hot for a long time. I said, hey, we could do this and, and we, could, we could, you know, serve it out of this. He's like, oh, okay. And then I looked up on walmart.com, Swiss Miss bulk hot cocoa mix was like $6 that would make, you know, two of these carafes full of hot chocolate. And I mean, his face was lighting up. And he said to me, he's like, dad, man, this plan is really coming together. <laughs> and uh, he was excited. Then I left it alone. That's all I did, right? Because I don't want to do it for him. I want to give him a kernel of, of information like the fire. But man, he started pestering my wife, you know, so God bless my wife. She took on the brunt of this. And so he convinced her to go to Walmart and, you know, they bought some foam cups. They bought the little mini marshmallows. They bought the hot chocolate mix. And so the next day or two days later, we boil up this pot of hot chocolate and we pour it into the carafe and he goes, sets it up at the intersection of our neighborhood. And Within minutes, he's already made three or four sales, and people are just coming by, coming by. He actually sold out the entire first carafe, and I had to run home and make him another pot and fill it up so that he could sell the second pot. Actually, my wife did most of it because I was on a sales call. But we got another pot done, and he sold out of that too. And by the end of the day, he had made about 47 bucks. And I mean, he was glowing. He was on top of the world. He was super excited because... Why was he so excited? I don't know that it was really the money. I think it was because he felt powerful again. He felt in control of his future where it wasn't like, uh, I have no way to make money. I have no options. And that is exactly what I'm trying to instill into him. Because when people are in a dead end job, when they're doing something that they don't want, they feel powerless. They feel like there are no other options. There are no opportunities. And their brain is so ingrained to go negative that they don't realize that money can literally be created out of thin air, right? I mean, you got to have an idea and you got to execute on it. But I think that the materials to do this were about 20 bucks. And so he created $27 in value in literally an hour and a half just by implementing his idea. And that's what I'm trying to teach more than anything is you can have an idea, you can see a need, and not all ideas are created equal, but you can see a need and you can fill that need and you can make money. Another idea we're having is for my younger son, McCarthy. McCarthy got a haul for Halloween. He got 7.2 pounds of candy. I actually weighed it. And a lot of it was big stuff like, you know, full Starburst, full Skittles, full candy bars. And for whatever reason, this kid does not eat candy. I mean, I'm telling you, he's eaten probably 10 pieces out of all this candy. And it's just sitting there and he's complaining that he wants to earn money. And he's thinking about, you know, ideas on how to do that. So we look up Google like ways for kids to make money. And a lot of it is, you know, start a YouTube channel or Instagram channel. I really don't want him to do something like that. One, because I'd have to be majorly involved, right? And I'm not trying to do this for the child. I want them to do it for themselves. And so I said, hey, McCarthy, why don't you take a backpack full of candy to school? And after school, you know, you sell off your Starbucks or Starbursts, not Starbucks. I mean, even if you sell it for 50 cents or a dollar, which is cheaper than they can get at a store, like your material costs on that inventory is zero. It's 100% profit. You got it for free from Halloween. You could turn this over. You could probably make five to 10 bucks a day selling this candy at the store. Another thing they do is the eggs, right? We we were had eight, 10 chickens. Now only three or four of them are laying, but still they're selling six eggs for I think $5, four or five dollars to the neighbors who are happily buying them. And this stuff is implementing really important soft skills, right? Because you think about Do you want to sit out there by the road and sell hot chocolate? Well, no. And of course, that's probably a little bit too juvenile. But what about selling your services as a realtor? What about knocking door to door and selling solar or new roofs to people? What about putting yourself out there and getting uncomfortable? And if that gives you the ick, well, it's because it's a muscle that hasn't been exercised. It's a muscle that hasn't been trained. And this is what I want to train in my kids that... Hey, go up, knock on the door, 
ask them if they want to buy six eggs, and the worst they can say is no. No, I don't want any eggs. And by and large, people do buy. And he has a competitive advantage because he's a child. You know, people, they're like, hey, it's a kid. He's trying. I want to help him out. And it's fairly easy to sell stuff as a kid. And it gets a little harder as you get older. However, that muscle and that muscle memory is being developed of I'm not afraid of rejection, right? I'm not going to let somebody that possibly could say no to me stand in the way of buying that new electric dirt bike that I want to get or that shotgun that I want to save up for or whatever it is that the new Lego set for McCarthy. And this is the thing where I'm trying to instill resilience of you're going to take a risk, you're going to invest capital in your deal, but very, very limited downside. I mean, with the eggs, there's no downside. I mean, we're getting the eggs for free. I'm definitely paying for the chicken food and whatever. And we have plenty. We have too many. And so if they go out and don't sell any, they're still going to learn something. There's no downside. With the chocolate milk mix, it's like, okay, you know, you, you invested 20 bucks, you made 47. I know, I mean, I would invest, you know, money to double it in a day or an hour and a half. I mean, that's a pretty good return on investment. And so I'm showing these kids that and they're also learning the more fine skills. Like I asked, how much do you think they should sell a cup of hot chocolate for? And McCarthy goes five dollars. I said, well, you know, you could try to sell it for five dollars and see what happens, but you may get some pushback. I mean, the adults may think, well, that, that's a little steep. I don't think I want to sell it for five dollars. Or maybe, maybe I'll be surprised. Maybe they will buy it for five dollars. Well, they settled it on two dollars a cup. And then I went and checked on them and I found that they were starting to fill these cups like half full of hot chocolate because they wanted to save the hot chocolate so they could sell more hot chocolate. And they were giving these like pitiful cups. I said, no, 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 boys. The material is cheap, right? It's water and hot chocolate mix and a little bit of milk. Like it's okay. You want to have a satisfied customer. You want a happy customer that's like, you gave me more than what I feel the value was. You gave me a full steaming hot cup of hot chocolate, and I'm happy with that transaction. I'm going to buy from you again. I'm going to come by and send my kids there, whatever it is. You don't want to be trying to give them the least amount of possible. And these kind of things, these lessons, they don't happen without them being in the trenches, with them interfacing with adults, with them interfacing with other kids, without them testing the market. What will the market pay for hot chocolate? Is $2 reasonable? Is $5 too much? Is $2 too cheap? Et cetera, et cetera. So, I want to talk a little bit about, about myself, my father, and how he implemented and ingrained these things into me. So a couple of my business ventures, i would say one of the first things I did was Icy Pops. I was at the beach. I live down by Charleston. I'm about 30, 40 minutes from the beach. And my grandma had a beach house, and we were there for a week, and we wanted to earn money. So I went to the grocery store. And I bought a little pack of ice pops, like flavor ice. You know what I'm talking about? They're in the sleeves. And we had a little cooler. We had a pair of scissors. We had these frozen ice pops. And we drug that cooler down the beach, stopping at, you know, groups, families. Hey, do you want to buy an icy pop? And you would think that this was going to be a great, a great business idea. But it wasn't. It was a little bit of a flop. It was actually a a massive flop. I don't even think we made enough money to pay back for our materials. And here's why. People typically don't bring their wallet to the beach, right? They put their wallet in their car, they lock their car, and they come down to the beach, and they don't have cash, or at least at this beach where we were at, they didn't have cash because there were no other stores. It was a private beach kind of, and kind of secluded. And so there was no money. And right, but that was a learning lesson. I'm like, okay, well, we went to where the people were, we went to where the crowds were, but we were in a situation where they didn't have the ability to pay. They didn't have cash on them. And so, that was like, okay, I'm, I'm not going to do that again. That was a good idea, but maybe I need to do that at like a, a 4th of July thing where people are around and there's other shops there and they have money with them. Second business venture that I did was grass. My dad was a realtor and sometimes he would get listings that had overgrown yards and they looked terrible and he would tell the owner, hey, would you like us to cut your grass and we'll make their yard look good. It'll sell faster and easier. And then you'd have me and my cousin, actually Yaden, you know, we were doing deals way back when we would go over there and cut the grass, we'd eat and get paid 20 bucks or whatever it was to do that. But then when I turned about 15, I said, dad, I want to get a job. I want to work at Piggly Wiggly. Piggly Wiggly is a grocery store and down in the South, if you're not familiar with that, but it's just a basic grocery store. 
Some of my friends were working there. It was a good teenage job and you could make five twenty-five an hour. That was the minimum wage. And of course, they're going to take tax and insurance or taxes and workers comp and all that out of it. So I probably would have ended up with about four bucks an hour. And so my dad asked me a very, a very good question. He said, Jennings, are you interested in the grocery business? And I said, well, no. He's like, okay, then why do you want to work at Piggly Wiggly? If you don't want to learn and own grocery stores, why do you want to do that? I said, well, because I just want to earn some money. And he said, well, what if I could show you a way to earn money, maybe even more money, a lot more money for less time without working at the grocery store? Would you be open to that? And he's using sales tactics on me. And, I, and at 15, I know. And I immediately said, Dad, I don't, don't want to go into sales. <laughs> I was already scared. And, uh, and he laughed. But he put me on the phone with one of his friends who lived up in Charlotte who had a window cleaning business. And this was exactly kind of like these other businesses that I'm doing with my kids. Very, very low startup. He gave me a material list like, okay, you got to buy a brush. You got to buy a bucket. You got to buy a squeegee. You're going to need a ladder. And that's pretty much all you need. Soap, whatever. And so it was like $200 all in to buy what I needed to get going on this window cleaning business. And my dad let me borrow his van and I was off. And in fact, when I first started, I think I was doing it on my bike because I don't think I had my driver's license at the time. But I got all this stuff. I printed some flyers, J. Smith window cleaning. We take the pain out of window cleaning. That was my tagline. And uh, made these flyers. And I went down to different residents, knocking on doors. And it was actually pretty hard to get a job. And so I shifted. I shifted to the commercial model. I went to the downtown part of our town. And there are all these storefronts and they had all this glass and they're displaying their merchandise in the windows and the glass is dirty and it doesn't look good. And I thought, you know what? This is a business owner who for very little money is going to make their shop look phenomenal. And also they're going to want it done over and over and over again. Because, you know, you sell a residential window cleaning job. They're probably going to do it maybe once a year, maybe once every two or three years. I know I don't clean my windows at my house every year. But these guys, they're going to want their windows cleaned every week or every two weeks. And so I created a pricing list. I said, okay, if you do it every week, it's $8. If you do it every two weeks, it's $10. And if you do it once a month, it's $15. So I gave them a break if they would do it more often. And one by one, I signed up business after business. And now, once a week, I ride my bike to the downtown area, which is about five minutes from my house. And I can go store to store to store to store, and I could make $50 in about an hour and a half, two hours. And sometimes I did big office buildings. I did my dad's real estate office building. He hooked me up with the broker. They paid me $150, and it took me three hours to clean the windows. So now I'm making $50 an hour as a 15-year-old. And this is what really saw, it really lit the fire in me of like, I don't have to accept $4 an hour, $5 an hour. I don't have to work 40 hours to make 200 bucks. Like I can make $150 in an afternoon. I can make 200 bucks a week and only work a few hours a week. And so this belief, this muscle was starting to build in me. And that's what helped me launch into my construction company. Started a construction company before I even went to college. I was doing building houses during the summertime. I was doing renovation jobs. I was doing, um, you know, building additions and, and all that because I built a tangible skill. And now I knew how to sell it. Now I knew how to speak to clients. And those skills translated right into real estate. I'm sitting down with an investor. Well, it's really no more different than sitting down in front of a, a client who maybe is going to hire me to build him a custom home. I got to show him the value. I got to show him what it's going to cost. I got to show him what they're going to get. I got to show him this timeline. I got to show him the budgets. I got to give him a pitch deck. What's in it for them? It's It all translated right into real estate for me. And so that skill, I'm really glad that my dad didn't say, okay, yeah, let's go down there and get you a, a job application at Piggly Wiggly, which I feel like that's what the majority of parents would do in that situation. And so if you have a kid and you're listening to this, now is the time. I mean, my kids are nine, 10, 11 years old. And as they continue to progress and and want to earn money to buy a car or to go on vacation with their friends or do, or buy a phone or whatever they want. I mean, kids need money and start saving up maybe for a down payment on their first rental house or their first single family house. 
I want to guide them into, hey, let's think creatively. What is something that works for you that is going to be, you're able to do, but you can leverage your time. You can actually make money. You're not, you're getting paid on your performance versus you spend an hour here stocking shelves and I'll pay you, you know, $7 or whatever minimum wage is now. And so this is a, a tangible skill because I know that no matter what it is, it doesn't even really matter whether they're selling eggs, selling lemonade, uh, cutting people's lawns, cleaning windows, they're learning sales skills. They're learning confidence. They're learning competence. They're learning how to deal with people that maybe aren't happy with them. I mean, I remember cleaning a lady's windows and she's like, these don't look good. I'm not paying. I don't like them. They're still streaky. And they were. I didn't do a good job. And so what did I do? I swallowed my pride and I went back and I cleaned all the windows again and she paid me. Right? And the, learning those things outside of the parental unit where you're having the real world, the market, give your children feedback as to what they're going to pay, how to keep people happy, how to sell yourself to them. These are skills that are going to build into their life so that they can be happy and productive and they can do something that they care about. And they're not in a slave, a wage slave, and just constantly trading their time for money. So if you have a child Take some time. The next time they're asking you for money or complaining that they don't have any money, start those conversations. Start to think of ideas. Dude, they're all over the web. Money ideas for kids or, you know, take a page out of my book. I mean, lemonade stand is easy. Chocolate stand is easy or, you know, selling candy after school. And if this works for McCarthy, well, we can take him to Sam's Club and go buy, you know, 20 pack of candy and resell it. And then he's learning carrying costs and inventory and saving his money so he can buy more inventory, scale it up. Learning where there are crowds. You know, we have a third Thursday every week at our, in our every month in our uh, town and it's people congregate at the town square and there's food trucks and there's thousands of people here milling around. Wherever there are crowds, there's people spending money and they can start learning and thinking like an entrepreneur. So guys, I hope this brought value to you today. It's what I got. Take some time to not only unlock your life, but unlock your child's life and your child's future. All right, guys, make it a great week. Peace. This is the podcastfactory.com.